Hey everybody, this is Rob from GearWire. Welcome to a screencast uh, showing a sneak peek of Reaper, uh, the OS X version of Reaper. Reaper is a DAW, a digital audio workstation, uh, developed both for Windows and uh, the Macintosh, although the, the OS X version is just in beta. It's an early version, so uh, the one we're looking at is uh, not in general release. If you uh, go looking for it, you're going to have to hunt it down. Uh, because uh, the, uh, the, the, the mainline version is actually the Windows version of Reaper. Uh, Reaper is uncrippled shareware and it uh, uh, comes with a 30-day free period. Uh, after that, uh, if you use it for commercial purposes, you are expected to uh, pay $200. Um, if you're using it for non-commercial, there is a less uh, expensive license, but uh, even a $200 Reaper is absolutely worth it in the Windows version. And once again, we are looking at the OS X version uh, of Reaper. Um, this is GearWire, as you know, and so uh, we use nothing but the most cutting edge, bleeding edge, dripping technologies available. And uh, I actually uh, chose Reaper as the DAW to use uh, to put together some uh, live GearWire projects, and uh, one of which is open right in front of you right now. This happens to be the uh, third part of a multi-part uh, phone interview series with the legendary Les Paul. And uh, let's just hit play and see, uh, see what we've got loaded up here. Paul. Born in Waukesha, Wisconsin in 1915, Les Paul spent the bulk of the 20th century defining the combined musical and technical mindset that GearWire was I'm born. just grabbing the master fader and uh, lowering the output a little bit here. Um, basically showing that the kind of uh, user interface objects that are present in Reaper are uh, very intuitive and very easy uh, to pick out. Um, from uh, their native uh, positions. Right here, obviously, we've got a, a, a meter. This is the master uh, channel for the entire project. Um, the master fader is right here. Now, did you first hear his records, or did you see him play first? Now, here's the pan control, as you could guess. And as you can see, it's tracking the pan there uh, with this uh, control. Uh, we've got your... We've got your mute. We've got your solo. When you, when you recall meeting him and for the first time, what one of the recall? strongest... Uh, one of the strongest features in Reaper is the ability to uh, route any track to any destination, uh, but just simply by clicking that track's uh, I.O. button. And all of the possible outcomes and uh, buses and routing are available under this button. Uh, now, notice you're not seeing any buses here. You're just seeing the output channels. That's because we are, again, looking at the OS X version of Reaper. In fact, let's see what version we've actually got here. Yeah, this is a 0.1x preview version. We're pretty early on in the development history of the OS X version. Um, the effects are laid out as simply as the I.O. and the routing. We can uh, just tap the effects button and up comes a list of possible um, uh, effects. Um, the implementation is a little strange here because we see that these are references to VSTs and yet we are running under OS X here. So in the future we should see this cleaned up. Um, there's also a reference to Jesus Sonic here, which is, uh, I just want to say, is one of my all-time favorite VST plugins. If you haven't checked it out, you should check it out. Uh, Justin Frankel, uh, the developer of uh, Reaper, is also responsible for Jesus Sonic. So definitely check that out. Now, you can see that there are uh, various controls available here, uh, not the least of which being adding new tracks or removing tracks, cut, save, all of the things that you would expect. One of the things as we look around, uh, one of the things you should notice as you look around Reaper's interface is you will see that um, unlike many other DAWs that are out there in the uh, world, there, are, uh, there is a method to the madness. Uh, objects and options and menu options uh, coexist close to each other in a way that sees the world very similarly to the way that, well, I see the world, uh, for example. Um, you don't have to uh, pilot your way through six or seven different uh, clicks in order to simply um, perform a basic function in Reaper, and that is something that I really do treasure about it. And we jammed and we clowned around, and then I had to run down and do the show. And when I did the show, one interesting he was feature also in present week. in uh, Reaper is the uh, global uh, pitch sound. control or global uh, speed control, if I just grab this fader right, right here at the master, so I'm going to do some nutty things to less. He dreamt about it that he loved to have. So you immediately had a guitar made by Apple Phone. 
And they made one exactly like the one I was using. Wow. And it was identical. And when he died, he was plus. Well, of course, you could just enter the. Uh... You could enter the degree of pitch change that you want uh, directly. Always, always very nice to not be stuck with graphical uh, uh, pieces when uh, you would simply, when you have a value in mind and you simply want to enter them. Well, we're going to turn this down and we're going to uh, finish up this just introductory video. Please keep your eyes on GearWire in the near future for more screencast videos and specifically screencast videos showcasing. Uh, the Reaper DAW. We're going to be uh, putting Reaper up against other uh, digital audio workstations in the future uh, with uh, GearWire screencasts. So keep your eyes on GearWire.com to check that stuff out. Thanks a lot. I'm Rob Wormowski.